conflict is a fact of life, at home, at play, and at school. Although conflicts occur continually in classrooms, students receive little training in the constructive resolution of conflicts. Telling students not to fight is futile, and it does not teach them alternative ways to settle disputes. In most classrooms, students use many different strategies for resolving conflicts. One student may use physical force, while another may simply withdraw. Maintaining a peaceful classroom environment requires teaching students standard procedures they all can use in resolving their conflicts. The first part in teaching peacemaking skills is to train students how to negotiate. There are six steps in negotiating. Stating what you want. Describing your feelings. Giving your reasons why. Summarizing the other's position. Inventing options for mutual gain. And agreeing on a plan. Each of these steps must be given individual attention. Learning how to negotiate is the foundation for the mediation process. Here are two students who resolve their conflict by applying the six steps of negotiation. I want to use the computer. I want to use the computer and I'm going to have it. Students express what they want. They understand that they have a perfect right to state their wants and wishes. I feel mad. I feel upset and frustrated. Students describe how they feel. This informs the other person and lays the foundation for fully resolving the conflict. I want to use the computer because I brought a new game and I've been waiting all morning to play it. And this is my only chance. I want to use the computer because I have an assignment due today. And you in my way makes me upset. And me not getting it done makes me frustrated. Students state why they want what they want. The reasons include both their goals and their needs. Brianna, my understanding of you is that you have an assignment that's due today and me and your way makes you upset and frustrated. Robert, my understanding of you is that you've got a brand new computer game that you really want to play and this is your only chance to play it. And me and your way makes you angry. Let's come up with some possible solutions. Reversing perspectives results in students being able to see the conflict from both points of view. How about for plan A? We'll see if there's another computer open, and then I'll work at that computer. How about for plan B? You help me finish my assignment, and once it's done, we can both play the game. How about for plan C? I'll use the computer for 15 minutes, and then you'll use the computer for 15 minutes. At least three possible solutions are identified. This ensures creative problem solving and an awareness of backup plans if the agreement does not work. I like plan B. I like that one too. The final step is for the students to agree on a solution and confirm it with a handshake. These steps of negotiation will, with practice, become part of students' interpersonal skills and become integrated into many aspects of the students' lives. When students are unable to negotiate successfully, a mediator is sought out to help resolve the conflict constructively. A mediator is a neutral person who helps two students resolve their conflict. The mediator keeps everything fair by standing in the middle and helping those in conflict proceed through the negotiation steps. Here, two students unable to resolve their conflict on their own receive guidance from a mediator. Jeremy, I want you to stop calling me names. I wasn't calling you names. All my friends told me that you were calling me names, so stop it. Listen, I wasn't calling you names. If you keep on accusing me, you're going to regret it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, you guys, do you have a problem over here? Adrian, will you help us solve this conflict? Sure, but you guys can't fight anymore. As you know, my name is Adrian, and I'll be your mediator. I can help you solve this problem, but I can't make you do anything. You both have to agree to solve the problem. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Good. There are a couple of rules that you have to follow. They are, each person has to have a chance to state their side of the story. You can't interrupt each other. You can't call each other names, and you have to be as honest as you can. What you say here in mediation is definitely confidential. Come on, let's get started.
Once the mediator introduces him or herself, the conditions for mediation are explained. These are, no more fighting. If you agree on a solution, you must abide by its conditions. And everything said in mediation is confidential. The mediator also states the rules students must agree to. These are, agree to solve the problem, no name calling, no interrupting, and be as honest as you can. The mediator then guides the students through the steps of negotiating. Meg, what is it that you want? I want Jeremy to stop calling me names. And Jeremy, what do you want? I want Meg to stop accusing me of calling her names. Meg, how do you feel about that? I feel upset. And Jeremy, how do you feel? I feel mad. Meg, what are your reasons for feeling upset? I feel upset because I don't like being called names. And Jeremy, why do you feel mad about that? I feel mad because I don't like being accused of something I didn't do. Okay, Meg, what's Jeremy's side of the story? Jeremy's side of the story is that he doesn't like being accused of something he didn't do. And Jeremy, what's Meg's point of view? Meg's point of view is that she doesn't like being called names. Let's see if you guys can come up with three ways to solve the conflict. For plan one, we could try not to call each other any more names. Okay, and Meg? And for plan two, I could try not to be so sensitive. And Jeremy? For plan three, we could just drop it and be friends. Okay, good. Now pick a plan and shake on it. I like plan three. So do I. Great. Now remember, since I'm your mediator, I'll be checking in on you to make sure you're both keeping your side of the deal. Great work. With repeated practice, mediation skills, like negotiation skills, become part of a student's repertoire of behavior. The peer mediation program forms the basis for a school-wide discipline program. Peer mediation can reduce the time a teacher spends dealing with conflicts by over 60%, and the time a principal spends dealing with conflicts by over 80%. Instead of being denied and treated as individual behavior problems, conflicts should be viewed as an inherent part of classroom and school life. Conflicts will occur. Students must be taught how to resolve their conflicts constructively and how to help their classmates do likewise. When students become peacemakers, a whole generation is empowered to solve their own conflicts and to help solve the conflicts of others. When students become peacemakers, they gain skills necessary to be responsible citizens and productive workers, and to lead happy and fulfilled lives. You know it's true that you get back what you give. People react to the signals you send. If you imply that you'll cooperate, Everybody has their own special gifts Put them together like a puzzle they fit Let's get together and make a new start The whole is greater than the sum of its parts If I can